Now, it's a hundred years ago this year that the creator of James Bond, Ian Fleming, was born. Lots of events are planned to mark the anniversary, but attempts by a publisher from Sheffield to release a book called The Battle for Bond has been shelled. Now, the book looks back at a high court case in the 1960s between Ian Fleming and Yorkshire scriptwriter Jack Whittingham, over who wrote one of the Bond classics, Thunderball. It's now all being pulped after Ian Fleming's trustees intervened. Sean Stowe reports. Born into wealth and a playboy lifestyle in Harrogate, Jack Whittingham finally settled after the war for a career in script writing, penning a number of British cinematic hits. In the 50s, James Bond author Ian Fleming had tried and failed to write Bond for the cinema. Enter this straight-talking Yorkshireman and his considerable scripting skills. It was Jack Whittingham who began the process of crafting the Bond we now know. The world's most famous hero assumes a natural position. From that screenplay, which was then Fleming showed to everybody, that's what interested Saltzman and Broccoli and all the other people who then suddenly saw the um, potential. But Fleming had also seen the potential and turned Thunderball the script into Thunderball the novel, with his own name on it. Whittingham wasn't going to stand for that, so in 1963 he sued Fleming for plagiarising or copying his script. This was the moment victorious Whittingham and friends, including Peter O'Toole, gathered outside court. And ironically, it's an account of that copyright action in a book published last year, The Battle for Bond, which has led to another Ian Fleming copyright row. Here they are. These are the famous Thunderball boxes. The book by Leeds-born author Robert Sellers is based on these court documents. They include letters and diary entries written by Ian Fleming. It's the reproduction of those documents in the book that the Ian Fleming Will Trust objects to, claiming copyright infringement. What they haven't taken offence at is, is the truth of what's in the book. Um, they, they haven't, because we, we've, we've said that Fleming was a plagiarist. What they've taken at umbrage with is that we've, we've um, reprinted certain letters in the book from Fleming, which they say they own the copyright and we had no right to, to print. Ian Fleming's trustees have taken that infringement so seriously that they demanded the surrender of hundreds of unsold copies of the book. And that's exactly what happened. The remaining books delivered by Courier to a top law firm in London. 2008 is the centenary of Ian Fleming. Um, there's a lot of events being planned, uh, a lot of things going on to celebrate Ian Fleming. And of course he was a great writer and he, but they obviously didn't want a book out reminding people that he was a convicted plagiarist in the year of his uh, centenary unfortunately we don't we don't have uh, the money to, to pay large legal fees that the Fleming Trust have a spokesman for the law firm representing the Ian Fleming Will Trust said the book infringed the trust's copyright and accordingly the trust requested that any books containing the copyright works be withdrawn the Ian Fleming Will Trust takes protection of its copyright seriously, particularly in the Ian Fleming centenary year. The spokesman added that Tomahawk Press had agreed to the withdrawal of the book and that the Ian Fleming Will Trust would have no objection to the already planned new edition of the Battle for Bond, as long as, of course, it was without the offending material. Sean Stowell, BBC Look North.